Hello and welcome. Today I'd spend a f I want to spend a few minutes talking about cell membrane. Cell membrane is a fundamental part of the system that provides cells with their structure. The other important part of cell membrane is that it separates the outside from the inside of a cell. So this is a mechanism where we can have differences in the environment in which a cell resides from the more stable interior of a cell where we want to undertake the functions that this cell is going to undertake. But the important part about the separation that cell membrane provides is it's actually also a mechanism for communication between the inside and the outside. A cell membrane not only acts as a physical structural barrier between the outside of a cell and the inside, it also acts to allow substances to move in and out of the cell in a regulated fashion. So let's have a look at some cell membrane and understand it. Here we have a classic view that we would see in uh, a light microscopic histological section. And in fact these cells are called cuboidal cells because you look at the shape of them, they're cuboidal. And the nucleus is in the middle here. What actually gives a cell its shape is actually the cell membrane. So this here, this boundary of the cell, is the cell membrane. And that cell membrane is m fundamentally made of fat. Phospholipid is the posh term, but fat. But to allow things to be transported across that membrane, and if you look at this as a classic example, obviously this is some sort of some sort of luminal tube, and there's obviously content flowing down here of some type. And clearly, we want that material, whatever it is, will have started in the interior of the cell, and we want that material to move across into the lumen. So that means that the cell membrane has to have some sort of mechanism where it can uh, control things that grow across it. The other important factor that we find in cell membrane before we go on any further is it also is integral to the process where cells are identified as belonging to oneself. So this is a classic situation of transplantation. If you take a piece, say a kidney, of a random person and try to transplant it, it, it in the end is rejected. And the process of rejection is triggered by elements on the surface of cell membrane. So all of these cells have surface elements that identify these cells as belonging to a particular individual. So we'll talk more about that. So what is cell membrane made of and how is it arranged? Well cell membrane, as I said, is made of uh, phospholipid and that phospholipid is arranged in a very neat way. At the external surface, at the outside, we have a head of the phospholipid that is water soluble and on the inside we also have a head that is water soluble and both of this makes sense because the outside world of a cell is fundamentally a water based environment and the inside cytoplasm is fundamentally a water based environment. But to give this cell membrane its structural integrity, we have a fat based element, and let's draw this in a different colour, let's try that again, 
a fat-based element to these two molecules. And we have innumerable of these lined up to produce a single layer of cell membrane. Water-soluble heads, fat-soluble tails. And the fat-soluble tails face each other. And this is what is the fundamental that prevents elements from going from the outside to the inside or vice versa. And then embedded in this fat layer, bilipid layer, notice it's called a bilipid layer because we have two molecules make up the layer, embedded in it is a sequence of proteins. And these proteins act, let's just draw a few more of those fat molecules on, on the other side here, with the phospholipid molecules. I'll just draw three, but you can imagine that this goes on forever and ever to completely encircle a cell. Just draw a little bit of the fat element of it. There we go. Getting back to these proteins, these proteins are what act to regulate transport in and out of a cell, but they also act as uh, surface receptors, so they can uh, have a molecule attached to their surface, like that, and that attachment to the surface will then cause a change down on the other side of the protein by changing the configuration of the amino acids in that protein. So this is called a receptor. And clearly in the mode that it's transporting things across a membrane, it's called a transport protein. And then we can have other proteins that on their surface have let's, for the sake of argument, call it little flags on the surface that uh, uh, acknowledge that this cell is from a particular person. So this is uh, the sort of self element of proteins on this lipid membrane. So when we look at a lipid membrane, let's remember that fundamentally it is a structural element and that structure is made by the arrangement of these phospholipid molecules. But it has embedded in its surface these proteins, which can either be receptors, transport, self-markers, all sorts of various functions of these proteins that give cell membrane other functions. So let's have a look at some cell membrane at electron microscopic level and s see what we can see. Now, although this is a very high magnification picture, note the scale bar down here in the bottom right is 200 nanometers, we can see the cell membrane running along here of a single cell and out the other side here. And if you look really closely in this area here, you will see the actual two molecular layers, the head, the tail, and then the tail and the head. And you can see it as two black lines running along there. It is just at the resolution, at the edge of the resolution of this image, so it's quite hard to see, so you'll have to look quite carefully to see that bilipid, bilaminar layer. Clearly this is not a high enough magnification to see the proteins that are embedded in this surface here. The other important thing to notice on this picture is that all of these round circles here. Now these are vesicles, which are intracellular organelles, but they too are surrounded by cell membrane, as is the nucleus of a cell. So cell membrane is not purely about the surround of a, the outside exterior of a cell, but it actually is part of elements within a cell as well. And if you look at this vesicle here, you can see something classic that happens with cells. Here is a vesicle either entrapping 
the external content of this cell to then pinch it off and become a vesicle that then migrates through the cell for some reason. Alternatively, and in fact in this case, what you're seeing, and I'm just going to reverse some of those drawings so we can see it better, what you're actually seeing in this case is that the vesicles are slowly migrating towards the surface and then expelling their content into the outside world. And just for those who are interested, this is actually the picture of this image is taken from a synapse. And we actually have neurotransmitter in these vesicles that is being expelled to then be grabbed up by a receptor protein. Let's just draw that in blue. There will be receptor proteins over on this cell over here that will grab up that neurotransmitter which will stimulate an action potential to head down this neuron over here. So this is the boundary between two neurons and you can see the cell membrane surrounded vesicles expelling the neurotransmitter. There are some other important things to remember about cell membrane and that is that cell membrane is turned over. The cell membrane you get when a cell is first born is uh, replaced very rapidly. So there is a continuous rapid turnover of cell membrane. And in fact in some cells I mean, the entire cell membrane can be turned over in sort of times like 20 minutes and things. So it's a very dynamic structure and, and cells are always changing their cell membrane. The other thing is that I'm going to do a separate video on, but we can talk about a little bit now, is junctions between cells. <coughs> cells actually... <coughs> <coughs> cells actually have a series of junctions between them and it depends on where they are as to what types of junctions they are. They have structural junctions such as desmosomes that bind cells together in structural ways so they don't come apart from each other. They have things called hemidesmosomes. Oops, try with or not hemidesmosomes. And they are again structural elements, but they are used to tie cells down to non-cellular layers below them. For example, when you want to tie your gums to your teeth, hemidesmosomes are used. And then they have a sequence of other junctions such as tight junctions, which prevent any extracellular fluid from sneaking between cells and moving uh, to different regions of the body. And then they have things called gap junctions, and gap junctions are like tubes that form between two cells that allow those cells to communicate. Now I saw this beautiful photograph from the Wellcome Trust that I think is a lovely elegant descriptor of what a cell membrane would look like if you could shrink down enough to see it from the surface. What's actually this view is, is actually looking from the outside of a cell towards the inside. And the key features to notice are the uh, fat-soluble tail and the water-soluble head of each of the phospholipids. And you notice that it's a bilayer here. So you can see the bilayer effect of the cell membrane. And then you can see these fantastic looking proteins that they've added to it. And you notice how the proteins can go through the membrane and stick out on the surface. Look at these ones sticking out here. And these regions sticking out have all these unique shapes to them. And those unique shapes mean that they are receptors for different shaped molecules that may come and float across here and attach. So re receptors can be very unique to uh, what they uh, sense in the outside environment. And when they do sense something in the outside environment, 
their conformational changes or the sh changes in the three-dimensional shape of these amino acids then can cause things to happen on the interior that can transmit signals inside inside the cell. So I just thought this was a fantastic image that can help you understand what a cell membrane looks like. And before I finish I just want to thank the uh, the images and their origins of the image and acknowledge the, the uh, astonishing effort that goes into making these sorts of images and these people have have clearly made some wonderful images to allow us to understand how cell membrane is structured and what some of its basic functions are. Thank you.